how's it going? We're down at the garden center today. We just had some concrete pieces delivered from Henry Studio. Super excited to get them up to our house and get them unpacked. So that's what we're doing today is just unpacking them. And they're in these two pallets right here. And my dad just brought a forklift around. He's gonna run up to our house with us and help us unload. I'm so excited. So there's a fountain, there's two different urns with on pillars and a bird bath. So we're back home now and I'm just so excited to see all of these pieces. There's a few of them here in our barn and then there's a few of the fountain pieces that are really big. We kind of had those set over in the area where we're going to be setting the fountain up. So let me turn the camera around and show you what we've got. So first of all, we've got a set of these leaf motif pedestals. Aren't they so pretty? I think we've got them sitting here upside down right now, but you get the gist. Aren't they beautiful? So on each side, they have this like oak leaf and acorn detail. And then to go on top of them, we got a pair of the leaf motif pedestals. And I love these because low bowls are just really fun to work with, especially if you're um, working with succulents or something like that. I think that that would make an excellent um, pot for succulents. And then we've got this right here. This is called a weathered bird bath. This is in a, like a darker color. Yep, weathered bird bath in, rel I think it's called relic lava um, is the color. Really nice. And then right here, we've got a few pieces of the fountain. So you can kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with here. And this is called the Grand Kensington Three-Tier Fountain. So there will be three tiers. That's one of them right there, one of the bowls. And we'll run out to uh, the area where we're gonna be setting it up and I'll show you the rest of them. Okay, so I'm actually standing in our driveway right now. If I turn all the way around, you can see the driveway, the barn right there. And then the house is through here, just for point of reference. I love this little formal garden out here, boxwood hedging all around with this beautiful arbor. Now, right now, I have this little peasant girl statue, I think that's what she's called, setting, or she was setting right here in the middle. And this whole area is planted with gara. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it always dwarfed her. She's too short, so I need to move her somewhere else. So we're planning on putting the fountain right in the center here. I think it'll look so pretty as we drive by. And you can see we've got tons of burlap and tarps protecting the pieces of the fountain because we were supposed to um, not get any of it wet before we set it up. So let's see what we got under here. So that looks like the biggest bowl. So that'll be the bottom tier. And I love it. So with fountains, you guys, in our area, we have such hard water that I always opt for a lighter stain color. Not really necessarily because it's my favorite stain color, which I do like this one. This one's called Traviata Gray, I believe. And I think it's a really nice, just neutral color. Um, but it doesn't show hard water as bad. So when the hard water starts to build up and we start getting that white crust, you don't see it on this color like you would on a darker color. So the next thing I need to do is prepare the area. So ideally, if you're setting up a fountain, it's a good idea to have a concrete pad poured about a little bit wider than the base of the fountain. That way you have a perfectly level, strong, sturdy base for the fountain. And so if you have any freeze thaw or the ground shifts at all, you're not dealing with any level issues on the fountain. You won't have to be using any shims to get anything to line up right. Uh, in this case, we were not sure we were gonna keep the fountain here, so we did not pour concrete. So what we're gonna do is kind of the next best thing. We're gonna dig a three to four inch hole a little bit wider than the base of the fountain and then Aaron's gonna come out here and fill it up with crushed gravel that does a really good job that's how we set them up in the nursery or down at the garden center uh, and and they do really well all right so I'm gonna go grab my shovel and my rake and my gloves I think that's all I need All right, so I got the hole dug. I think it's big enough. We'll have to see once we get this all unearthed here. I'm gonna have to get Aaron to help me lift that statue somewhere else, but he's gonna come out here and fill the hole with gravel. Maybe a tubing okay? Yeah. We can replace it if we need to. It doesn't get hurt too easily. Then it's a matter of flora. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, that's way better. There. there. Now. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Before what, we what? get that out, usually the angle is right there. This one. I know. I think so. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Today is a super exciting day. We're getting the fountain set up. You can see it right behind me. Let me turn the camera around. We've got Joaquin from Henry Studio here from Chicago helping us get it all set up. We've got the base in place. So we've got two pieces going on so far. We've got the base there and then the bowl. And are we going to start plumbing it then now? Correct. The getting... next step is connections. Perfect. Which we've got in here. And as we go along, I'll kind of explain the step so we've got the pump here which what size of pump is this this is i believe a 450 gallon per hour pump okay which we need to have we need to have a big enough pump to take the water up as high as this fountain goes which is quite high it's a three-tier fountain so you need to have a big enough pump that has a big enough water capacity and then you have tubing uh-huh the different adapters allow, allow you to connect each level perfect a rubber stopper that will seal the uh the cord output very nice. The ability of controlling water flow and uh, just a, a clamp to make sure that the tubing doesn't come off the pump with a high pressure. Very nice. So that's all it takes you guys to get this fountain up and going, minus all of the big pieces. We've also got my dad here helping lift and then there's Aaron. We're all kind of running around. And that's the drain that you drain the fountain every winter. Correct. This will all be closed. Okay. These function for a different setup of a fountain where they're in a pool. So there are multiple feeds of water, but in the standalone version, you only need one access for the plug. Okay. That becomes visible for you to be able to access and drain at, for winter. Uh, at the end of season, right? Okay, so the cord goes through that hole, Correct. the end of the plug-in. And then let me show you around the back side of the base here. This is where we will pull the cord out and you can see this little piece here is what hides it. So it kind of makes it look complete there. And then the cord is going to run from here all the way over to our power source, which is right there, which reminds me I might need to go get an extension cord. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a nice long cord. Quite simple setup. One, two. Oh, I like that. <laughs> There's nothing to it. In fact, if it's easiest and you can reach in, you may not have to undo that, but rather just remove this, water drains down. Mm, wonderful. Okay, so Aaron just loaded up the next couple of pieces right here. And I'm gonna get in this trailer and hold them steady. Heave ho. You wanna utilize a little bit of protection to prevent. Sure. Scratches, dings. Oh, look at that. So each piece that goes on, uh, Joaquin's making sure it's level. That way in the end, we don't have any issues. Plastic shims. Okay. To either adjust right under the ball or under the base, which I like the base because it'll hide better. Mm -hmm. And that might be just it. I'm not gonna break it just yet, just in case the subsequent levels pressure a little more and shift things around. Okay. All right, so we have two more pieces here. Okay, got the tubing connected there. This guy up, shift it. So we've got another curl of tubing there. This is the finial, and basically your tubing will just sit in there, giving you an overflow from the top for these pills to function, while still providing water to come right back down through itself to feed this, this larger. Oh, interesting. Hole. Okay. My mom just got here with the baby. He's doing brass let's anymore. let's see what brass? he's doing. Hey, sweet boy, what are you doing? Did you have fun with Nana? Yeah, I love you. I missed you. I'm going to plug it in, see how it runs, and then we'll be able to see where we need to use any wedges. Look at that. Three levels of water. Joaquin is working his magic on getting everything leveled so everything runs properly. All right guys, so it's been a couple of days since we initially set the fountain up. We did end up draining it that night because it was supposed to be in the low 20s for a couple of nights. And it's really not a good idea to leave water in your fountains if it's gonna freeze. And I do not want anything bad happening to this fountain because it's absolutely perfect in this spot. I just love it. So like I said, this is called the Grand Kensington Three-Tier Fountain. 
and it was so nice to have Joaquin from Henry Studio here. I mean, he made sure everything was running properly and that everything was level. I mean, I've set up a lot of concrete fountains in my day down at the garden center, but I actually picked up a few tips from him and learned a lot during the process. In fact, a lot of the pieces in our garden came from Henry Studio years ago. So in Versailles, there's a statue of Persephone as well as a big uh, urn with a ram's head on it. It's got a beautiful top. And then I've got a large statue of Hebe underneath one of our globe willows, all of which came from them um, through our garden center. And our, the previous owners actually left them in, at this house. So we moved in to these beautiful pieces. Like they were already here. Uh, we didn't have to move them and they're just placed perfectly. And I just feel like we are so blessed to have them in our garden already. And I just know that a lot of you guys have asked us where we got the pieces, where you can source them. So Henry is one of the sources. Um, through our local, well, the garden center where I work. And if you guys want to find out where you can get stuff like this, you can go to henrystudio.com and there's a tab at the very top called where to buy. So you click that tab and then punch in your zip code and I'll tell you, uh, you know, every place that carries their product within a certain mile range. Um, so it's a really good idea to do that first. Go to somewhere local so that you can see what they look like the finishes, how, this, how they sound. It's super important because these are lifetime pieces for our gardens. It's not something that we're just gonna replace every you know, few years. It's something that's gonna you know, come here and it's gonna stay for a long, long time. So you wanna make sure that you really, really like it. If you do that and find that there isn't any retailer within you know, hours of where you live, there are a lot of garden centers that sell them online. So you can go ahead and Google the name of the fountain and you should be able to find somebody. But I always recommend that you go to your local garden center because especially with pieces like this, you really wanna see them in person. So just really quick, there's a couple of really commonly asked questions about fountains that I thought I would address. The first one is algae, uh, especially in areas where it gets really hot, how to clean it. I go the old route. I just drain the whole fountain. I scrub the algae and hose it out. It's pretty simple. I don't have to use any chemicals. There are things though that you can add to the water that are safe for wildlife and birds. Um, I'm not super up on it, so I can't even tell you a brand, but I recommend going somewhere like your garden center that might have pond supplies and you should be able to find what you need. And the second thing is on how to overwinter these fountains, especially if you live in an area where it gets really cold and you have a lot of snow. So the best thing is to drain the, all the bowls out and do this about a couple weeks before your first expected frost date in the fall. You want to make sure that the fountain completely dries out. Then go grab some old sheets or towels, something like that, and fill up all the cavities. So all the bowls, you want to stuff it into the interior part in there. Um, you can take the fountain or the pump rather completely out and store that somewhere dry and maybe a little bit warmer. And then that's pretty much it other than covering it. There are actually uh, legit fountain covers that you can buy and I'm gonna get one for this fountain for next year that will it's proper so you're not out here wrapping it in plastic bags or something like that which I've done before um, but there are proper covers and it's also a good idea if you have any pieces that are a little bit lighter or smaller that could be subject to any heavy winds like if a wind could knock it down you want to make sure to take that piece off and then just nest it down in the bottom bowl and that way it doesn't tip over and crack or you know get damaged in any way but we're planning on doing a whole video on how to overwinter when i actually get ready to put all of my statues and fountains to bed next year this year i guess so that's it you guys i hope you enjoyed seeing this fountain come together it's a super exciting time for me i'm so in love with the fountain i'm in love with where it's at the sound of it everything about it and you guys will see this a lot i'm sure in um, videos we have coming up and garden tours and you guys will have seen what it looked like before the fountain was even here so that's kind of exciting so thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye